Hi everyone, my name is Gina. I'm a teen librarian at the Spokane Public Library and today I'm going to talk to you about our interactive fiction program that we're going to be doing virtually. So first, you can just play this game that I created and that can be the, the whole program for you. Um, it can be found on our website and I'll show you where that is in a minute. But um, I would really hope that you would want to create your own stories and to create your own text-based video games or interactive fiction games. These, these are a lot of fun, they're really easy to create, and I'm going to show you how. The very first step is by downloading Twine, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go to our browser button. I use Chrome, and so if you go to Chrome and you go to uh, the address bar up here and type in twinery.org, it'll take you to this page. And in the right hand corner here is a little yellow sticky note that gives you download options for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux but you can also use it online if you don't want to download. This is a complete, completely open source uh, tool that you can use for free. Uh, there's, it doesn't cost a thing, um, but you can also look on this page. There's a, a lot of information. There's a lot of community that you can, you can read other people's interactive fiction stories and, and see how it really works. There's lots of options and it's really exciting. Uh, but I'm gonna show you right here in this video exactly how to create Twine, so a, a Twine game. So once you download or open it in your browser, I've got Twine right here, we're going to open it up. This is what the opening page looks like. And you can see this is my story, the black book uh, that I created, and that you'll have the option to play. But when you want to go start a new story, you just go over here to the right where there's this green button that says it has a plus story button. So go ahead and click that, and you can name your story now. And if you this might seem like kind of a stressful point uh, to be making a name. Maybe you don't even know what your story's gonna be about yet. You can put anything. This is something you can edit later. So let's say my story and we'll add that. Okay, so now we have a very beginning story. And this is sort of like the little, I'll open this wide so you can see the whole thing. This is the grid that you'll be putting all your pages on and they call them passages in Twine. But um, see, so you can edit them and delete them and play them and see what they look like. And there's also more passage options, which are why, you know, just kind of that. Um, we're going to start story here. So this will be the very beginning of our story. And you can edit. And this is what your page looks like to start. Um, so I'm going to call this page because they all have to have names. You can just call it beginning or you can name it as something else. This, this actual title of the page doesn't matter. It's not gonna show up in your game at all. It's just kind of for you to know what page is what. So feel free to name them however you like. And then we'll go down to this text editing section. If you delete it, uh, Twine automatically gives you a bunch of suggestions on, on things you can do, like how to put certain text in bold or certain text in italics and things like that. Um, so you can get much more complicated with this if you'd like. And there's, again, lots of things on uh, the Twine website. There's, there's a help section that I will show you here in a minute um, that gives you a lot of extra features. But I'm just going to go through the basics and all you really need to start your own game. So the very first thing we do is we enter some text. And you have to kind of decide how you want your story to begin. So I'm going to pretend that this story is starting off in um, after a plane crash. So you wake up after a plane crash. You find yourself on a beach. Okay, so that's the beginning of the story. That's where it starts. And what's great about interactive fiction or these text-based video games is that they are a game. They are allowing uh, players to participate in what you're making. So we put two brackets here. This is going to be the start of a choice that you're going to give a player. So the first choice I'm gonna say is maybe you wake up super thirsty and you are looking for water. So you are thirsty. You oops, decide to look for water. And that's what that text will show. Then you put a dash and this little arrow, oop, and put this little arrow that is going to uh, indicate what page you're going to be taking this choice to. So let's say page one, and then we put it in brackets again. 
Now you'll notice that as soon as I put it in brackets, uh, the brackets and page one turned blue. That's because those won't be showing. They're more of a command feature for, the, for Twine to create a new page, um, but that's what it should look like. But this isn't really that interactive if there's only one choice. So we're gonna give um, our players another choice. Let's say you decide to look for value in the luggage. All right, so say you wanna look for maybe a, a knife or maybe some medicine or something that could be of use to you following a, a plane crash, so you decide to look through the luggage. That sounds kind of video game-like, right? So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add two brackets at the beginning. The, the choice is going to be this text here. Then we add the arrow and we put page two. And these don't have to be called page one, page two. These could be called volume one, volume two. This could be collection one, collection two. This could be choice one, choice two. It doesn't even have to have numbers. It could be called water. It could be called luggage so that the pages are titled by the choices that are made. So it really is up to you. It's not gonna show up in your game, it's just something to help you organize uh, your, your game and your choices. So we can do two choices, and we can do two choices on every page if we want, but we can also do three choices. So let's say um, you decide to search for survivors. Because it's a plane crash, right? Maybe you have family on the plane. Maybe you wanna find, find out what's going on. So if in all of that are variables that you can add to this story. Um, this story can be told from a per first person perspective. This can be um, the story is a character that you're building so they actually do have family or or have a backstory. It's really up to you. So let's put page three because that's just how I'm choosing to do this. And again it's turned blue so we know that it will, wor will work. And we don't need to save this. Um, all we have to do is hit X when we're done and Twine automatically saves it. And you'll notice that right away it went ahead and it added one, two, and three pages. So all of those choices went to a new section. So let's click page one. This was the one where we chose to do water. Um, so let's say there, and it's already, see it's already named page one for us, but we can type um, there appears to be no water on the beach. Okay, so what do we do? leave, you can put a new option, leave the, the beach and search the nearby forest. That's an option. Um, and you can also say, what are we going to name this page? We could call it forest. Um, or we could call it uh, page one, choice one. I mean, you can do it however you want. Um, oops, see, that didn't turn the right color. See how it's yellow? That's not right. So we need to come up here and add that second bracket. So it helps you out a little bit. And then here you can say, you can make another choice. You can say, um, maybe you, because there's no water, you're more concerned about survivors. So you decide to search for survivors. And this was a choice that we made before. So let's go ahead and, uh, send this section all the way over to page, I believe that was page three. And see, it's gonna already sync up to page three. And now that, now that we're done with these choices, let's see what it looks like. So, and you'll notice, I can slip this down, I can move these all around. So, but it goes to page three because that's where that choice went. So see, you can rearrange this however you want, make it make more sense to you, um, you know, in any sort of way. Um, but but that's kind of how that looks. Now it looks really confusing, but this is this is just to show you that you can make this go however you like. Um, so if you're working through this and you wanna make sure that it's playing the way you expect it to look, you can go down here and you can hit play. And this will take you to a browser and look, this is our game. So we can click, you wake up after a plane crash, you find yourself on a beach. So what do we decide? Let's do the you're thirsty because we did add some options there. You decide to look for water. And then here's our other choices. There appears to be no water on the beach. So we're gonna search for survivors. And then it takes us to that other page. And you'll notice, as I said before, that these don't have titles at all, like, um, like our pages do in the actual Twine uh, software. Uh, that is again, just to kind of, it's for you, so you can name them however you like. 
But that's what that looks like. And, um, and so once we're done with our story, we can come back to kind of the work page. Um, and before uh, I show you how to save, I do want to draw your attention to this help button up here. And you'll notice that it says twine guide. So I, like I said, I'm only going over the basics of this with you, but if you click on the twine guide, it again takes you to a twine wiki. And this has a whole bunch of different extra things you can do. Um, like look this, you can say add stats, RPG battles, or just plain random events. Um, so you can get more and more complicated as things go on. There's lots of different things you can add. Um, I've seen uh, on YouTube, people will use Twine as a foundation for their, their video game. They kind of map out how they want the story to go, and then they maybe hire an artist or maybe make their own artwork later and add that on top of all the stuff that they created in Twine. So this is a foundation for game making, essentially. So I hope that if that's an interest for you, you can, you can take a chance to go through this and add a little bit of extra stuff and, uh, and improve your game over time. So let's go back to our Twine workspace page. And here we can say, let's just say this story is finished. I know it's not, but let's just for, for instruction's sake, say it is. We click on this little arrow here by my story, and we're gonna click on this button that says publish to file. So all this means is that we're going to be saving it on your computer at home, your tablet at home, whatever you're, you're making this on. So go ahead and click publish to file. And again, it's taking you to your documents and where you can save things. So go ahead and save it wherever you like. And once you save it, go ahead and uh, send it me, oops, send me an email. And you can send that email to gcooper at spokanelibrary.org. And uh, that there is going to uh, send me the file and I'm going to post it to our website. So anybody that has any interest in publishing their work, letting other, other teens or other patrons view it, maybe, uh, maybe send you feedback, uh, we're gonna, you can post this on the website. So just send me your file for your game and what you're gonna be able to see is we have right here, our website uh, is the teen page. I don't know if you knew that we have a teen page, but if you go to our, our um, homepage, then you click here where this grade section is for kids and teens, click that and then click on the teen button and it'll take you to this page. And this page specifically shows all of the different options we have that are specific to teens or students, like um, the different types of books that might be YA books or um, just books of interest to this age group. Um, but there's a new tile here, you'll see it's the art tile. We just recently added this um, where we have our gallery. So you can click on that tile and it takes you to this page where right now there's only my story, the black book, um, and uh, you can just click on the title here and it'll take you to it. So if you click on that, you'll get to see the story. So this is, ooh, let's restart this story. This is what my game looks like. So it has a it has a start game button and then there's a bunch of options and you just work your through, way through the story. Um, and there are a lot more options than, than the one we created earlier. Um, I'll just quickly show you that, oh gosh. I'll just quickly show you that um, what it looks like. In twine because it is a, a bit more complicated. So this is what my whole story looks like. There are lots of different options. Um, there's some options that go like this. This path kind of goes this way. This path goes this way and this path goes this way towards the end. So this is the whole plan of my video game. And you'll notice that I didn't name these as page two, page one, page two, page three. Now that I have done the whole thing, I wonder if that would have been a better way to do it. I named them based on what's happening in the page so I could find it better. But this is what a simple story looks like. Um, it did take me a little bit of time to make, um, but it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, so please send those to me um, again at my email, which is gcooper at spokanelibrary.org, and we'd love to publish your work. Um, this, this Twine software, it's free, and it's a great way to just get started with game development, game planning, and, and kind of just try out uh, uh, getting other people to see what you can make and, and just start practicing with it. And, uh, and again, this, this can be the foundations to a game that has more things like voiceovers and artwork and things like that added on top of it. So, so please enjoy this, this, this new software that, that we're talking about and, and please send us your work. We'd love to display it. 
I hope you just uh, enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.